All right, the day has come. 2023 Dexter cattle breeding season. So Mr. President has been sharing a fence line with these girls for the last few months. You got Millie, she'll, I think she was in heat yesterday, so she might get bred right away. Okay. This black cow should be bred already. And then Ladybug, the one chondro, dumb chondro, she should be bred already too. So that means he has six, six heifers to breed. So we've been building up our breeding stock in our herd and our heifers are finally old enough to breed. And the timing's right now, if we put the bull and the heifers together, we should have calves once the weather starts to warm up here next year. April and May. All the heifers are between 14 and 15 months old, which is when you want to start breeding Dexters. Stay behind me. Just have it ready right there. Looks like he's got a nut sack on him. So what you'll see here is Mr. President going around to each of the heifers and smelling their behinds, basically, and checking for heat. So he's going to go through each one until he finds somebody that is ready for him. So our bull, Mr. President, is homozygous for the polled allele, and he's homozygous for A2A2 milk, which means that he has two copies of each allele. Everybody gets one set of DNA from your mom, one set from your dad. So the only alleles that he has to pass on to his offspring are for being polled, which is no horn, and for producing A2 milk proteins. So we know that all his calves, no matter who we breed him to, will be born without horns because being polled is a dominant trait. So even if they only get the one copy of that allele from Mr. President, all our calves should be born without horns. So we'll never have to disbud calves again. All of his offspring should also inherit one copy of that A2 milk protein allele, which is something that a lot of people are looking for in their family cows. And the rest of our girls, we've been trying to find similar genetic backgrounds, but also with really good confirmation. So 
just because a Dexter is a 2A2 and homozygous polled doesn't necessarily mean they're a great breeding cow. We also need to make sure all of our Dexters have nice straight backs, their legs are well placed underneath them, they're you know, well put together healthy animals that should live long healthy lives and pass those traits on to their offspring, which I think we've done a really good job of picking some really good breeders. Okay, most of our girls have, or all of our girls have at least one A2 allele. There's a couple that are A1, A2, so they're heterozygous. They have two different milk protein wheels. So if we breed those heterozygous girls to Mr. President, then 50% of their offspring will be A2, A2, and 50% will be A1, A2. Uh, and then we also have some chondrodysplasia carrying cows. So Junebug and Ladybug are both chondro carriers. They're short-legged dexters, which means that they're heterozygous for this mutation that causes dwarfism. So they have one normal allele and one short-legged allele. And so they'll live long, healthy lives. Their offspring will inherit those alleles, right? So from our bull, they'll get a regular long-legged allele. And then that means they each have a 50% chance of passing their chondrodysplasia allele onto their calves. So from ladybug and junebug, half their calves should be short-legged like they are, and half should be long-legged like their daddy. Now, one thing that is really important to keep in mind is that if you ever have two chondro-carrying dexters that you breed together, so say we, we bred ladybug to a chondro-carrying bull, then any of their offspring that get two copies of that chondrodysplasia allele those babies will be stillborn. And those are called bulldog cats. Uh, their faces are smashed in, they're malformed, and they, they cannot survive. So it's called a, a recessive lethal condition. That won't happen on our farm because our bull is homozygous for the normal, normal body size. So, we can't have any bulldog calves here, but if you are using a dwarf bull and you have dwarf cows, that's something that you need to be aware of. You know, it should only happen 25% of the time, but when it does, that would be really sad. <laughs> this first breeding that looks like it's gonna happen is not for a purebred Dexter. Millie is me. a purebred Jersey. So why are we breeding her to our purebred Dexter bull? Well, for Jersey milk. <laughs> for Jersey milk. Oh. And yeah, the short answer is we want Jersey milk and we don't want to mess around with the Jersey bull or AI. Our Dexter bull's wonderful. Well, he found his first love interest. And he's plenty big enough to reach Millie and get the job done. The cross between these two breeds, I'm really excited to see what they're like. They're called Belfairs. Jersey cross with a Dexter. Hopefully, Belfair should have the best of both breeds. They should be friendlier and milkier than a Dexter, but they should be beefier and do better on less speed than a Jersey would. So we'll have to see what happens and see if they live up to the, the Belfair hype. Millie's Belfair daughter should be excellent family milk cows too. That's normal behavior. Cows moaning the bull. You come in to see me, girl. Hey, no. Sure, do. All right, well, Mr. President's been in with the ladies for over a week now, and he's a gentle, silent lover, so 
we can only assume he's doing his job. He did his job last year. We have uh, Jolene here that we will put in with him probably early August and breed her back. So with any luck, we'll have a bunch of calves on the ground next next spring, April, May-ish. All right, well, thanks for watching everybody. We will see you on the next one. Thank you.